Hello and welcome to VMware basic networking tutorial. In this session you are going to watch about physical networking basics. We are going to cover some basic physical networking foundational concepts to level up your knowledge and understanding required to start with uh, virtual networking. Some of the things that we are going to talk here are about physical uplink, VLANs, link aggregation, DNS, NTP and NetFlow. Let's get started with physical uplinking. A simple definition about physical uplink is a network port that allows a computer or a server or a switch to communicate with other outside network. You can configure an uplink port as either an access port or a trunk port. So an access port that can be assigned to only a single VLAN. So you usually connect a network cable from a server or a computer to a network switch and switch port accept only traffic from a single VLAN. Trunk port is a port that can be assigned to multiple VLAN and is capable of uh, carrying traffic from multiple VLANs. So when you configure a switch port as a trunk, it accepts frames from multiple VLANs. Usually uplink ports between two switches are connected as trunk so that it can carry multiple VLANs traffic. Come to virtual local area network VLANs which separate an existing physical network into multiple logical networks. So for example you have a single physical switch in your organization and you connect uh, devices of different department into that switch. So by assigning VLANs to the switch you can divide into multiple logical switches for each department. Look at the picture we have a switch with 8 ports I have two departments PC connected to that switch. I don't want the PCs between these two departments communicate over the network. So I separated the first four with VLAN tag 1 and the other four with VLAN tag 2 and connected all the PCs or the devices from those departments to that switch. In this way, any device connected between 1 to 4 port can communicate and any devices connected between 5 to 8 can also communicate. But if a PC connected to port 8, let's say, want to talk to the devices in a port 1, 2, 3, 4, it need to be routed through a router because it is in different VLAN. This brings more security and performance as it reduces the broadcast domain. There are two types of VLANs, port based VLAN which is also called as untagged. So when you assign a single VLAN to a switch port and that is called as access port, it accepts the frames from that particular VLAN only. Tagged VLAN which you can tag multiple VLAN to a single switch port by that way it accepts multiple VLAN frames to a single switch port. And for this you need to configure switch port as trunk. This is what we discussed in the previous slide. Come to link aggregation. Link aggregation which bundle or aggregate multiple network connections. So the advantage is high availability and higher transmission speed. Compared to conventional single connections like you run a single cable from your computer or your server or your switch to the next networking device, these methods help you to run multiple cables from a switch or a server to another switch or your car switch and by this way you get high availability even if one of the cables become faulty. To be able to use link aggregation, what you need is you need to have same speed for all the connections that you're going to bundle and you have to use parallel point to point connections. There are two type of lags. One is static where you configure manually the link aggregation and next is dynamic lag which use a link aggregation control protocol which automatically negotiate the settings between the two connected devices. One of the most common problem that can occur during the process of setting up link aggregation is misconfiguration. This happens with static manual configuration. Using LSEP link aggregation control protocol helps you to get rid of this misconfiguration with lag settings. It automatically removes faulty links in case one member stops sending packets. So this, so this helps you to minimize the packet loss also. Then come to DNS domain naming system, a centralized naming system for your organization. 
Domain naming system is like a phone book for your computers and servers. Instead of using IP addresses, you can reach to computers and servers using a meaningful name and that is DNS. So DNS need a DNS server which answer you or which return to you for any DNS queries. So when you type google.com, you get an IP address and that helps you to reach to Google server. It is a very critical infrastructure component for vSphere and it heavily used in digital certificates for vSphere communication. So a proper DNS setup is mandatory to have a vCenter vSphere environment in your organization. NTP Network Time Protocol It's a networking protocol for clock synchronization between the computer systems. So NTP ensures that the time dependent process occur in sync across all the host. It is very essential for logging to system and for authentication and monitoring function to know exactly to know exactly when the issue happened because the issues may be related to some other system also so when you troubleshoot you want to understand what time this issue happened so you can find out the correlation with uh, other hardware components or other application also so ntp is a very critical component when it comes to authentication monitoring and logging function final one netflow which provides uh, more visibility about traffic flow in your network when you troubleshoot your network regarding slowness or some other issue it is good to see where the traffic is coming from, where it is going and how much traffic is being generated at any time. Cisco developed a NetFlow protocol for its product. Soon after it get uh, standardized and now many other vendors are implementing NetFlow into their products. So this protocol allows you to really drill down into your network traffic and to see where the traffic is coming and where it is going. Look at the picture you can see. We have uh, remote sites and internet connected to our router and we configured to forward NetFlow packets to NetFlow collector. So you configure with an IP address so that the router forward the NetFlow packets into that NetFlow collector. NetFlow collector receive it, store it and pre-process it. From the administrator console you can query the information and you can find out the reason for the issue. So each flow contains many data points like IP source, IP destination, source port, destination port, class of service, layer 3 protocol type and interface. So that is all in this lesson. Let's summarize. In this lesson we have covered basic networking items and foundational concepts that we are going to use later when we uh, talk about uh, vSphere uh, networking, uh, vSphere networking advanced tutorials and VMware NSX. So we have covered physical uplink to know how networks are connected and we talked about the VLAN to know how they separate network for security and performance. And also we talked about high availability using link aggregation. We went over DNS and NTP and then finally we looked at NetFlow for monitoring and reporting purpose. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next lesson.